Hello and welcome back. Today I want to do our NAS test of the Level 1 PoE camera. We've already done a couple of videos on this and today I want to do a NAS test with a Synology NAS. Now I'm going to be using Synology Surveillance Station platform and I've already set the camera up in the background. I've already done that prior to the recording. There's me there. And you may have already noticed that the audio quality on this video although let's face it, audio has always been my kryptonite, it's probably not great right now, and it's because I've had to move the recording operation of this video to the other side of my office. So I haven't got all the soundproofing and the buffers and everything that I would have on the other side of the room. To give you an example, uh, you've seen the recordings with the background before, but for now, if we make our way onto the live feed um, available from the Synology user interface, we can see me right there rubbing my moustache like that, because that's what you get when you don't shave. Um, as you can see right here in front of me, this is a desk area that I work in. And behind me there, if I move my hand just about right, you can kind of make out the Rio Link camera that we're going to be comparing against in the next video right there. That's the other PoE camera. Now, during this video, what I'm gonna do is show just how well, or good or bad, that this camera works within the surveillance environment on this Synology NAS. I'm also going to test this camera um, on the QNAP NAS that I've got in the test area just behind me and just see just how much of the features and functionality are supported by this camera. First and foremost, you've probably already picked up on the fact that my voice is at a different kind of um, frame rate and recording to the audio you're hearing. It might be very difficult to follow right now. So what I'm gonna do is maybe reduce that or we're going to create a sub screen here within this one. So we're gonna do a quick zoom to give you some idea um, about there. We're just gonna zoom so it's not on my face anymore. But again, just like any Synology NAS, you can move around. Um, now, I have already tested this camera with their own default software and there were loads of uh, enterprise level features there in the background of this camera that you're not going to see right here. But we can already see, even on this local area network, we can see the delay on this when I go and click my fingers now. So a delay there of about a second of a, and a half. And of course we can create sub networks in here. This is, isn't a PTZ camera, so we can't control any of the patrol patterns, but we can you know, create individual um, sub stream um, settings if we so choose, because this camera does support up to quite a high rate of um, recording. So if we move there onto the camera side and hopefully this won't kick us out of the level one PoE camera um, on the Synology NAS as it does it there in the background. And again, we can create sub networks of this camera. We can create different arrays um, and management tools there. We can even create a kind of a zoomed separate recording space if we choose within the web browser. And again, it's good to see that it is picking up the camera and I know we can pick out quite a lot of the different settings if we so choose. We can even create, um, we, need, um, we can create sub networks as well. So if we go there, we can then create a different one. So obviously this camera is living in there. And then after that, we can create different networks if we've created them there in the background. So we'll go there and we'll make our way back into the recording software. And as you can see, these are all the settings that we're utilizing. And we can upscale and lower those within the configuration tool of the level one camera. So if we want, we can really push the boundaries up and increase the frames per second, increase the picture quality, increase pretty much everything to make a much faster and more streamlined recording. Now, other things we can do is create those sub networks within the camera if we choose. So with the events log and with the audio and image log, we can then create different um, closer um, areas of recording. So right now there's me still recording on the camera. And what we can do is draw a box that we want to focus on, say just this area here. Uh, we've stopped drawing. So we've got that area there pre-recorded. We'll then call this one a substream here. So we'll do that right now. This will be our substream of just that area there. Stop drawing. We'll call that region number one, ROI, and we'll call that one even closer as before, and we've created that sub-network as well. Now, if we go back to this camera here, um, we do want to leave that option Synology. We're just gonna come out of there. We can look at the additional options for adding further cameras. 
So right now we'll click next. And that's how easy it is to grab these cameras. If a camera is on the supported camera list from Synology, it will appear here. Whereas over here, if it's an OnViv, in other words, an unbranded camera or a camera that's not been completely tailored to Synology's platform, it will appear on the OnViv list. But from here, as you can see, we can't name it that because we've already named the camera that in another area. But we can test that connection and we have to double check that it's got the password that I created. Test the connection. The camera is supported. And as we can see, now it's adding that sec second feed of this same camera. Now, if we played with a number of those settings, we could then, it's now activating that second camera there in the second area. And from here, we can now see we've got those two recording of the same camera. And we will be using something not dissimilar to this to when we do the verses using that other camera. Now, we can do lots of options with this. We can tailor a lot of those options from within the camera itself. We can configure a lot, a lot of the options of the camera itself you know, change some of those settings, uh, the live view, what we want to see, if we want to use some of the um, settings that we've already created uh, there in the background, some of those substreams, as well as create a scheduled pattern. This camera does support all of the features and functionality present from um, Synology's own surveillance platform. We can change a lot of the options as well. We can look at some of the different, if there were different cameras available from that brand. We can even look and some of the ported options of the things that we've created within that camera network from the previous video, which is quite neat. We'll come out of there and go back to those live feeds there. And again, having the same camera on two different feeds does open up a few options. So for example, say we want to focus just on that face, we've now got that second area there. And we can duplicate this window into further windows too, all of which from the same camera. And there we go, wave my hands in the air. Again, we can change some of those stream settings. We can then make, maybe make a second one where the bandwidth and the quality will be lowered in the second recording or heightened if we so choose. We can then access some of the camera's own settings to make some of those changes too and make a pre-recording just in that one area. You can just keep zooming in and in or out or out as you, so, as you see fit. You can zoom in by double clicking all of those individual options and if I move my head around you can see that it is still recording from both of those cameras. You can even ensure that even though um, a camera is recording this whole screen you can create a second path where in this area it is recording say a, a, a space of death. So say this was a recording screen and you want that area recorded you can ensure that this camera records while this camera doesn't. Even though it's the same camera, it's going to be recording only a small area there if we so choose. So you can set it up that even though it's set it up there and we're looking at one camera in your environment, you can use the multiple licenses from the Synology to create tailored alerts. So say for example, on this camera, we want to set, and on this camera, we will set a new alert. We'll make our way into that camera again. So we'll go back into the IP camera. And again, the level one uh, camera does seem to support all of these features. And from here, we're now going to set an alert. So for now, we're going to do an event detection on this second camera. So for now, we can either use the camera's own settings that we've ported over from our login here, or use Synology's own. Most people will want to use Synology's own because with that one, you want to be able to say that I am only using, uh, so if we delete all of those, we'll delete the detection area there, and we'll create a new detection area here. Now this will mean that if I get up and walk to that side of the room, this detection area will then create an alert. So we've selected that one there, we can come out of that. We've still got our detection area um, recognized, and then we'll set it up that what we want to see is if someone walks into that area for more than a second, then it will alert. Now, if we were using, say, the DVA system from Synology, we can you take advantage of a number of the particularly cool features that are available to more enterprise level cameras like face detection, intrusion detection, line crossing, and more. If you've got a camera that supports these features, you can use the DVA Synology to take advantage of them. 
If we move forward, we're setting up this alert and then we can decide that we've now got a motion detection alert set up right here. So on top of that, we can then say when we want this alert to kick in and how we want it recorded. Do we want it scheduled to happen at all times so it's continuous or do we want to have motion detection only active at certain times of day? Say we only want it between 1 a.m. and 8 a.m., that option is available. But of course, we can just delete that if we so choose. So we click delete and just make sure it is continuously active. We're now setting these settings up and it's applying these new alert settings to that second recorded stream coming from that, simp that identical camera. It's now gonna reactivate the camera because once you've applied settings, the camera will need to re-establish those, but we should have an alert area behind me on this camera. So we'll quickly double check that those settings were indeed saved. We'll go into event detection. We've got that one second detection area there. Okay, so let's test our alert system. So right now, we've got the left camera here. We've got the right camera. As you can see, the alert icons are active. So let's get my hand and move it out there. Move it along and wallop. As you can see, the red alert symbol up there is telling us that this camera has been alerted to my motion. Now there's lots of little things we can do here with that alert. We can start recording if we want. If the NAS is already recording, we can assign uh, that recording, those alerts, to happen in real time. Or as I've done already, I've made sure that I'm getting desktop notifications for these alerts. In fact, if we go to the alert panel, we can see all of these alerts happening in real time in the background over the last minute or so, all happening in the background during this recording. And lots of these are pre-recorded, so we can look at the ones from the past. So as we can see, if I put my hand in the air, that is not the recording we're seeing. We're seeing that recording from this camera. So we're seeing a great deal of functionality there. Of course, because this isn't a pan, tilt, zoom camera, we're still not going to see what we want to um, what we would hopefully see. Now, we can um, utilize some of these recordings in real time within this platform. We can also create manual recordings if we so choose. So if we want, we can start recording cameras without waiting for an alert. We can just go ahead and record there if we so choose. And now this right camera is recording while this left camera isn't. And that's gonna record everything I'm doing. The same goes with taking snapshots or lowering, as mentioned, the stream and camera quality here on these other camera recordings compared with this other one here. And once again, that alert system that we've created there will happen in real time. So at the moment, we've not set up anything to happen when the alert happens. But had we gone into the alert management settings, we could then set up lots of protocol there in the background of what we want to happen when an alert is triggered. I've muted this system, so unfortunately you won't actually get the beeping and hear that in the background because we don't want to hear some feedback. This camera, of course, also records audio and visual quality too, so there are lots of things that you can do with this level one camera on the Synology NAS. Ultimately, I've got to say, in terms of compatibility, I'm quite pleased with this camera overall. Right, let's get that alert going anyway. I'm quite looking at pictures of myself. So. I am gonna wrap things up here. Um, do look out for my comparison between the um, camera that we're talking about today, the level one there, the R, and then how it compares with that Rio Link RLC there in the background in both Synology and QNAP platforms. And do look out for the QNAP QVR Pro overview utilizing the level one FCS camera very soon. But otherwise, if you've enjoyed this, click like. If you wanna learn more, click subscribe, and I'll see you next time.